Well, there's always going to be a case of when and not if prize money did take a hit under these current financial circumstances. And I'm joined by the racing manager of Club Mad Angle, Mr. David Watson. David, unfortunately, the club, despite a determined and sustained attempt to keep prize money at its current level and keep faith with the participants, it has been forced to reduce prize money. Yeah, that's correct, Michael. Uh, unfortunately, we've got to, to a position now where we do have to make reductions. Um, the tab forecast, which we knew some time ago, but we held off as long as possible, have come back um, pretty severe. Um, you know, there's reductions of up to 45% uh, on the TAB allocation to clubs. So Harness Racing New South Wales uh, made uh, a press uh, release last Friday where they've reduced 20% across the board. Uh, they've also made a number of cuts to other feature races and whatnot. Um, that's available on the Harness Race in New South Wales website and interviews that have been conducted by John Dummacy. Um, so we've made a decision. We uh, put a press release out yesterday. Um, once again, those reductions are, are 20%, but ours are a little bit different um, because of the funding models and whatnot. So we've gone back to 7,000 on a Tuesday. Um, they'll take effect next Tuesday. And it's a minimum base of 11,000 on the Saturday nights. Well, David, it had to be expected when you've got no sponsors as far as they're taking a financial hit as well. No patrons coming in and some 3,900 TAB outlets, whether they be clubs, pubs or TAB's agencies. It's certainly going to come to uh, bear in one stage or another that this is going to happen. Yeah, and, and bear in mind, the real impact has been from those uh, punters that like going in to the outlets to the pubs, to the clubs, uh, they socialise, they have a, they form a little syndicate with their friends, they have their 20s and 30s and $40 on, but there's thousands and thousands of them and that's where the real hit's been um, experienced. Also what we've got is a lot of our funding can also be drawn from sports betting. Well, there's no sports being conducted anywhere in the world at the moment. Um, Bruce Christensen does a really good interview with Andrew Bentley and Michael Gearan, which will be available on the Club and Angle website. Uh, towards the end of this week, where he goes into more detail on all the, all, how that all works. As I said, we do take a hit from any sport that's not being conducted, uh, which the TAB uh, bet on, and a lot of other agencies. So those, those um, revenues uh, is what's really missing at the moment. We've gone probably a month longer than we should have, um, but we were very mindful of the effect it will have on the participants. We get to a stage where we have to, and unfortunately this is where we are at the moment. Well, David, you just mentioned the fact that other sports are suffering. The one good thing, and I hate to use the word positive under the current climate, the one positive, harness racing is still competing due to the professionalism of the participants. Oh, absolutely. Like, hats off to all the participants. Hats off to harness racing in New South Wales, um, all the protocols put in place to make sure that we do race and, and the meetings they had with government bodies. Um, the participants have really um, supported it and doing the right thing, even to the track guys here. Like, we race now here at Menangle because we've absorbed a few extra race meetings with the regionalisation. Um, at no extra cost, we've still been able to conduct an extra two, sometimes three meetings a week, um, just through the hard work of all the track staff we've got here, led by uh, James Chang and Owen Mulligan. Well, David, it's not going to be an easy fix and it's not going to be a quick fix, but sometime down the track, the clubs will be, including the governing body, Harness Race New South Wales, they will be keen to try and get their prize money levels back up. Oh, as soon as those extra dollars start flowing through, and that's opening up of sports betting and the whole the whole lot that goes with that, um, as soon as those extra funds come through, you can be rest assured that it'll go straight back to the participants. You know, what we've also got, which is really important, we still do have the $30,000 feature event each and every Saturday night. Um, That'll be shared around a lot more in the coming months while regionalisation is taking effect. So it'll be shared amongst restricted horses. The $30,000 race will be shared amongst the mares. Uh, it'll be shared amongst the divide, the open class paces. And there'll also be a bi-monthly trotters race for $30,000. So um, you know, people have always asked, you know, what's the value of the $30,000 race? Well, I can tell you it's worth over half a million dollars in extra revenue on the percentage increase in turnover that we do get from having a $30,000 race. Um, that can't be lost on the industry so we're going to spread that around a little bit more while regionalisation is taking effect on the Saturdays the levels have come down a little bit like um, the old MO the restricted class events gone from 20 to 18 but it's still um, a very attractive uh, race for people to participate in so we've tried to keep faith and keep that at 11,000 as the minimum money they will be racing for on a Saturday night. Yeah, as we said, the fact that we are racing still gives the participants an opportunity to earn a dollar, and none more so than upcoming. We've got four meetings in the space of five days, commencing Friday. 
Yeah, it's a busy couple of nights. We've um, got the sleeping bags out and tents and ready to go. Um, no, we're looking forward to the challenge. As I said, the track staff have just really taken this on. Um, I'm just so proud of them, the way they've taken it on. You know, we're working nights. We're working the Friday nights, Saturday nights, into Monday, Tuesdays. Um, as I said, at no extra cost. It's all within the hours we're doing at the moment. We've restructured the rosters. And um, I'm just really proud of how the boys have taken it on. Well, the governments, both levels, federal and state, along with medical authorities, have said there's some light at the end of the tunnel. How long's the tunnel? Yeah, look, it's um, it's a pretty long tunnel, but I think we're going to get there. A that's my opinion that we might get there a little bit quicker than we first anticipated. But we just got to keep doing the right thing. The participants, I know it's hard times. We've just got to be patient. Um, all industry bodies, yes, it's tough times. Just be patient. The more patient we are now, the quicker we'll get to that end of the tunnel. Dave, you get the feeling that the general public are very keen once these restrictions are lifted to get out and about. And what a better way when the restrictions do come off, get the clubman angle, get the country clubman angle. This is going to be certainly the hub of entertainment in this district. Oh, absolutely. In this district, people will just be so keen to get out. Um, we will follow what protocols are set by government. Absolutely. Uh, that'll be first and foremost in our mind. But we will work within those guidelines. Um, and when we get a bit closer to that light, um, we'll make sure that we're out there publicising what can happen here and get people back out enjoying the Saturday nights at Club Angle. Yeah, it'll be, certainly be the place to be. Well, David, unfortunate news, but the good news is we still compete. Absolutely, Michael, and we look forward to competing as much as we can.